When Bond enters Moneypenny's office, he throws his hat, and it's facing the door on the coat stand. After his meeting with M, his hat is facing the other way. When Bond finds Sylvia putting in his flat, both her hands and Bond's change position on the golf club handle in different shots. The chauffeur at the airport had taken Bond's hat. But where did he put it? During the drive, Bond is wearing his hat again. The car that Felix Leiter hops in at Kingston International Airport is a 1961 Chevrolet Impala pillared sedan. But the car that is used in the chase scene on the highway is suddenly a four-door pillarless sedan. One of Bond's traps in his room is his briefcase. He puts talcum powder on it. When he is done, he sets the case down on the right side of the table. To the left is a mirror, and by the mirror is an assortment of perfume bottles and a shaving bag. When he returns to his room, the contents on the table are reversed exactly, and the shaving bag has turned into a magazine. How odd. When we see Bond in his hotel room for the first time, there are two bottles on the table, a clear one and a green one. When he re-enters the room and checks his traps, the green bottle has disappeared. Bond takes a new bottle from the drawer, but that also is clear. So what happened to the green one? Bond is wearing a light-colored suit when he meets Felix. He goes home to the hotel by cab that night, and from that scene it directly cuts to the one where he's asking Professor Dent about Strangway's samples. Bond is now wearing a dark colored suit. He must have made a change of clothes before he went to Professor Dent, but he doesn't check his traps in the hotel room until coming back from the professor. Well, in order to change, he would have had to open the closet where his hair trap was placed. The first time Bond speaks to Quarrel, he is painting a boat on the beach. Quarrel puts the paint on the boat close to a paintbrush. Seconds later, the paintbrush has moved a little further away from the paint, and also the paintbrush in the paint bucket has moved from left to right. When photographer Annabelle is taken to Bond's table at the club, the camera strap is around her neck. In the following close-up shot of her, the strap is gone. In the next shot, James is taking the strap and the camera from her neck. In that same scene, the position and amount left in the liquor bottle changes various times. First it is full, then half empty, and finally about a quarter has been filled back in. Also in this scene, Annabelle breaks a flash bulb and scratches Quarrel's right cheek, producing a large amount of blood. In later shots, there is no wound on his face. In any case, bulbs of that time were covered with a thick plastic coating. If the bulb was smashed, the plastic coating, which is clearly seen as burned and blistered when she smashes it, would have kept the sharp edges safely inside, and Quarrel would not have been harmed. There are two GPO 706 ivory telephones on the desk of Plydale Smith, handsets on their cradles in opposite directions, left and right hand. Then, when Bond walks to a table to pick up the parcel, both handsets appear the same way with handset curly cables on the right. Cut back to the desk and they're both different as they were before. The La Salle hearse chasing Bond is a different car than the one that crashes down the ridge a few moments later. The La Salle hearse has distinctive headlights fixed to either side of the grille. The crash car does not have that and is a 1951 Humber Super Snipe MK3. When Bond reaches Miss Taro's house and she opens the door for him, all the shutters on the door are at the same angle. But as Bond steps in, one of the shutters has suddenly changed its position. Miss Taro previously gave Bond directions to her house at 239 Magenta Drive. Later, at the house, Bond calls for a taxi, giving the address as 2171 Magenta Drive. Good memory for a secret agent. 007 sits down and puts a silencer on his gun. In the long shot, he has a tie on, not in the close-up. He's also not using his Walther PPK, but instead a Belgian FN model 1910. 
This is not Professor Dent walking up to Miss Taro's house. It was a reused shot of Bond walking up to the house earlier, only flipped and darkened to disguise it. Dent's tie is really messy and the label is visible. But once he's sitting down, the tie is tucked in and straightened neatly. Bond's socks change from long to short in the same scene. When Bond kills Dent, he has a cigarette dangling from his lips. Just seconds later, it is in the ashtray by his side. Mr. Smith and Wesson, and you've had your six. Side note, Dent's gun is clearly a cold model 1911, which holds seven rounds. When Honey returns her knife to the sheath hanging from her waist, it jams going in, making it top-heavy, causing it to hang handle down. She then picks up shells from the beach with both hands, with the knife still handled down. In the next shot, a second later, with Honey's hands still holding the shells, the knife is shown fully seated in the sheath, blade end down. The guard lowers the megaphone and waves his arm as he shouts, which has a megaphone echo effect, although he isn't using the megaphone. After Bond and Honey's encounter with a patrol boat on the beach, she retrieves her shirt from her shot-up boat and they run off into the jungle barefoot. In the following scenes, they're both wearing shoes. Honey tells Bond that he should cover himself with seawater, because the mosquitoes wanted the salt on his body. Uh, no. While flies might love the salt, mosquitoes actually want blood. When Bond and Honey are in the water, Quarrel calls them to show them the dragon trail. Bond's and Honey's clothes suddenly become perfectly dry after they've just left the water. During Bond's shootout with the dragon on the beach, he uses three different model handguns. His Walther PPK changes to a Colt 1911 government model, then to a Browning High Power. Impressive. The famous Goya painting of the Duke of Wellington is observed by Bond as he ascends a short flight of stairs to the dinner table in Dr. No's lair. But previously, when Bond and Honey emerge from the elevator, a wide shot of the same room is shown and the painting is not there. When Dr. No crushes the gold Buddha statue at the dinner table with his hands, it falls off the table onto the floor. However, when a wider camera angle is shown, right before the guard takes Bond to the elevator, the gold statue is back on the table. Also at the dinner with Dr. No, Honey is wearing pink trousers. The next time we see her is when Bond rescues her from the ramp, and the trousers have now mysteriously disappeared. When Bond is climbing down the pipe during his escape from the cell, the stunt double replacing Connery can be seen quite clearly. Bond turns the radiation level up to 40 to 45, but when he's fighting Dr. No up on the walkway, it goes down again to 30, with no one even touching the wheel. At the end of the film, when Bond and Honey are in the small wooden boat, there is no tow rope visible, but when the rescue vessel shows up, it's suddenly there. The patrol boat appears to be crewed by US Navy sailors, but as the boat sails away, it's flying a white ensign, the Royal Navy flag. Also, Bond and Honey's positions in the small boat have reversed 